Hello, everyone. Our next speaker is Cedric Ferry, who began his Android journey back in 2007 with the very first Android beta. His passion for the little green robot has taken him around the world, working for leading companies in the financial industry here in Australia. Today, Cedric will be exploring a hot topic. Is KMP, the new Android tech stack. He's going to take us on a journey through the history of Android development, breaking down why Kotlin multi-platform, KMP, might just be the next big thing for Android developers. Let's give a warm welcome for Cedric. Just one second to set up. All right. Are you all ready? Cool. So this morning we're going to try to answer this question. Is Cotton Multiplatform the next Android tech stack? Um, I'm Cedric Ferry. I'm an Android developer. I've been doing that for 15 years. Uh, phones. This is the HTC Dream, which is uh, the very first phone released by Google, uh, shipped with Cupcake. Um, the, my journey into Kotlin multi-platform started with a side project, um, Android Developer News. And it's, a, it's an app for Android developers to get uh, the latest update about what is happening um, in this field. I built that with clean architecture at the time, which forced me to separate uh, the two layers between Android stuff and Kotlin stuff, really. Um, this is the only thing you need to really remember about clean architecture, because you can go in many ways. Um, since then, the Kotlin multi-platform popularity has increased a lot. In just the last year, it, has been, um, it, it just has doubled. Um, <clears throat> and I, as we can see here, uh, this is um, from Google Trends. The popularity in 2024 during CotlinConf was at, the, at its peak um, and more than double from uh, a year before in 2023. So just to understand how many developers here are, have heard about Kotlin multi-platform. OK, a fair bit. Do you have any iOS developers in the room as well? OK, we have a few. Android develop, uh, iOS developer that are taking the threat of Kotlin multi-platform seriously. That's good. Um, so what is Kotlin multi-platform? Okay, so Kotlin multi-platform allow you to share code across platform from server to all the clients, including Android, iOS, desktop, and web. But today we're only going to look at clients because this is what we do as mobile developers. And um, moreover, I'm going to look that in a lens from when I will say Kotlin multi-platform, I will always, almost always, call also about uh, Compose uh, multi-platform, which is the UI layer that JetBrains uh, is building to allow a Kotlin multi-platform full stack. And as you can see, it's already reached um, stable for Android and desktop. iOS is not too far behind, and web is tailing. Um, the way a project is organized with Kotlin multi-platform is that your Kotlin code is going to live in the common module, and all your platform-specific code will live in different modules, like Android, iOS, desktop, and web. And we will see that in a, in a few minutes how. The Kotlin multi-platform tech stack could look like this today. So Compose, which is based on Jetpack Compose, but it's a Compose version uh, bought to you by JetBrains uh, that works on every platform. The threading is handled by Kotlin coroutines. The persistent layer can be, can be handled by either Room or Escalate Delight. The networking uh, usually uses uh, Ktor, and we have a good dependency injection with Coin. So the idea is obviously you write once and you run everywhere, right? For almost. Um, and it is appealing for, to us Android developers because um, Kotlin is a language we know and we love. Um, Kotlin multi-platform allow you to use library that you already know and you are familiar with, such as Room, Coin, Jetpack Compose, Coil, or Data Store. And of course, you can reuse code 
uh, that you already wrote. Like if you've got cut in code that does not call Android APIs, you can absolutely reuse it by just moving it in, a, in the command module. Um, so to continue, we need to look at what is the current tech stack and what is the tech stack of Android uh, through the history. Um, and I saw three uh, Android tech stacks so far. So in the early days, it was just vanilla Android. It was just using Vue, async task uh, for threading, persistent in SQLite, but we didn't really have a library. It was uh, just straight with uh, the API. And for networking, we are using a default HTTP client from uh, Apache, which is a, a Java library that we were importing. That was the old days. Um, and then as the Android development got a lot bit more maybe professional in a way, uh, we got uh, the community being involved and we got a lot more uh, libraries such as Rx Java for threading, Retrofit uh, was a big one for networking, and Dagger was the one of the first a dependency injector. And later on in 2016, and this is when things um, got really, really professional and uh, more guided, um, Google provided the uh, MVVM recommendation and the view model. Um, uh, they, this is also the year they released uh, the room, um, uh, abstraction layer, uh, also Hilt, the dependency injection based on Dagger uh, 2. And of course, Retrofit uh, continues journey and became uh, Retrofit 2. If we look a little bit closer to that stack, this is not w the only thing we do, right? It, this is a lot of business. Maybe you're going to write most of your business logic under here. But you also need to interact with the system. Right? And for that, you will need third party or Jetpack libraries, Android X library for uh, biometrics or notification, access to the camera, uh, logging your crash, um, accessing the location extra. So um, while there is a text tag that is very similar, as you can see, uh, the KMP text tag is almost one-to-one -one with the current uh, Android, um, except uh, for retrofit and um, Hilt for dependency injection and uh, network. Uh, So it's a better view here. Um, they're very much similar, except those two. And obviously, in the in a, uh, in a KMP, pure KMP, you will not have views. Even though you can find ways around that, it's not a. Uh, if you have views, you can still build a KMP app, uh, but you will have to do a little bit more implementation for some platforms. Um, but what do we do with all that? Right, all the platform specific. This is a big question. Uh, and content multi-platform uh, doesn't necessarily uh, provide a good answer right now. So we're going to look at what are the options for us. So how do we fill this gap? Um, and the first thing we can do is that content multi-platform provide APIs called uh, Actual and Expect um, that allow you to uh, declare some sort of interface if you like across platforms. Um, and the second option is to use a library that is, crop, that is already cross-platform. Cross so let's look at how expect and actual are working. Um, so with expect, you can see that really as an as a declar uh, interface declaration uh, in the common module. And you will have to uh, implement the actual implementation for this particular platform in your target platform. And so declaration are going here, all your interfaces. You say, I want to use, we will see later, a camera view. You don't have to worry about how you implement this camera view. It's, it's going to be different on every single platform because this is very tied to the system. Um, but you just say, I just want to use this camera view with these settings, with these parameters, very much like an interface. And then you do the actual implementation for each platform. Um, Expect an actual support uh, a lot of uh, uh, types. You can expect just a function. You can expect just a variable uh, or value. You can expect an object. And then you do the implementation in your actual. So uh, for Android, for instance, uh, there is nothing much here about specific Android. In this example, we will see an, another example that is uh, uh, speak for itself. 
Uh, but you, you just add the actual keyword in front of a declaration, and then you have your actual code. Here is the example I was talking about with uh, camera. So in the expect uh, and common module, you just declare a composable, but expect a camera view. What does this camera view? How is it handled? You don't have to worry about that at this stage. Um, you just implement your view, your uh, screen, and you put the camera view inside. And then later, uh, on the Android system, for instance, you, uh, you will have the actual implementation. And the actual implementation could look like the following, uh, where we do use a preview view. Uh, we use Android view. This is where I was saying uh, you can still use actual Android view even with KMP. Uh, and then you will use the camera provider and everything. And we can do the exact same thing for iOS. Right? So you completely abstract the complexity of, um, of how it is going to work. And you can have your single um, code source that use this one. And then the complexity lives in the uh, iOS, Android, desktop, or web modules. But can we do better? And this is where the community kick in. So since the launch of, um, or actually not since the launch, but in the last, just in the last three years, we have seen Kotlin multi-platform uh, libraries um, increasing five times. So we, we have like nearly um, 2,500 uh, libraries that are produced by the community or by Google or by um, uh, other companies, including Square or TouchLab, that provide some of the features we need. So what is a KMP library? It's exactly the same as we have seen just before. It's just embedded in a package. So it still has a common module and a module for each uh, platforms you want to target. And so it's basically um, abstract everything we have seen before inside the library. So you don't even have to think about what is the implementation of the camera or the implementation or of act, act, um, accessing the sensor of the location. You don't have to worry about that. It provides you an API with the information and you don't have to worry about the platform. So the pros of these libraries is that you have a single implementation in Kotlin that is multi-platform, and so you don't have to worry at all about the actual implementation. Uh, you can fit, it fit most of the use cases, and uh, you can still access the platform-specific API if you need to. Um, the cons is it may not target um, all platforms, it's very common that some of those library, they don't support web, they will support, I will say always, Android and iOS, and sometimes desktop, and I would say more rarely web. And you may miss sometimes some very advanced feature. For instance, if I go back to my camera example, nowadays on Android you can do uh, HDR, HDR uh, photography. Uh, you may not have access to those uh, HDR APIs because uh, basically, uh, by simplifying the abstraction, uh, you may miss some of those features. But you can still access with the platform APIs, but it may not be there. Uh, or you, you're just going to do a little bit of extra work. Um, there are a lot of libraries that exist already. You may have heard of Code. It's one of the most popular libraries if you use um, uh, Compose because for its loading uh, images, it can now replace Glide if you use Glide in the past. Uh, logs, just think of something very simple. If you just want to log, you use maybe log.d, but log.d is uh, API, it's an uh, Android specific API, so we need to replace that. We you can use Timber, very popular library as well. And you, you see, there are already a lot of other libraries that are quite popular. And there are other libraries that are becoming popular, but you can see the star rating on GitHub is less. And this is where, as a community, maybe we need to start uh, to adopt those libraries, even sometimes for Android, pure Android projects. Uh, but they exist. They work for most of them. Um, and I would say um, they are actively managed and, and uh, maintained by the community or by companies. They are, this one is built by Line, for instance. Um, the Moco one is built by a company called uh, Icefark. Um, 
and yeah, some of them are built by other companies. Um, you can find more uh, libraries on this GitHub, it's pretty good, and also JetBrain pro provide a package search. So I hope you can scan two QR codes. Okay. All right, so we kind of fill the gap here, right? So we have, if we look one by one, we've got something for biometric, something for, for notification, camera, et cetera. So we, we could be able to, to do an app full multi-platform uh, with, um, um, without worrying too much about actual implementation. Um, but then we have to ask yourself, uh, can you actually trust VKMP maintenance? Because when you adopt a new technology like this, uh, you don't want your company to rely on this uh, third party, which is JetBrain and Google, and then find yourself in two or three years that they abandon the project, right? So it's very important that uh, there is something uh, that is very tangible and safe. So there are some good news. JetBrains has, has been around for more than 10, 20 years. Uh, they're very committed to Kotlin. Uh, they invest a lot. Um, and Google uh, has uh, started to adopt Kotlin multi-platform quite heavily, both, um, uh, I would say, uh, externally uh, in some ways. So, for instance, we now provide the Room database uh, for Android is Kotlin multi-platform already. Um, Lifecycle, um, View Model, Data Store, they all uh, multi-platform libraries now. Uh, and we are still working on more. Um, and um, as we will see in a few minutes, um, Google is also invested uh, Kotlin multi-platform for their own apps, in particular the Google Workspace, uh, like Google Docs, etc. Uh, some other library, um, companies are using Kotlin multi-platform and contributing, such as the Cash App and Square, they're both part of a block group. Um, TouchLab is another uh, company that is providing Crash, uh, Crash KOS, and IceRock is the company that built, they build like a large number of, um, of libraries for multi-platform, including um, uh, geolocation, maps, uh, biometrics, pretty much a lot of things that Android X is doing, they, they're doing it, and it's work for both Android and iOS, sometimes desktop. And obviously we have a community. The community is more and more active, as we have seen at the beginning. Our Kotlin platform is more popular. It's answering one question that a lot of CTOs, engineering manager, um, wanted is like having the same performance uh, of a, um, a native app with a single code base. And so uh, Kotlin Multi-Platform is able to achieve that. So let's have a quick case study. Uh, first, I want to start with a uh, recently published app. You may know the YouTuber uh, MKVHD. I released this wallpaper app that uh, you may or may not find very useful, but uh, that's not the point. Um, what is interesting is that they actually use Kotlin multi-platform and Compose multi-platform. So uh, they can share the UI across Android and iOS. And um, they had only a very small team to build that. Um, and uh, try it yourself, but the app is pretty responsive um, on both platforms and um, just work quite well. Uh, I mean, it's native app, really. Uh, the other case I want to uh, study is uh, Google Docs. So um, Jason uh, from the Google Workspace team gave a talk at Cutting Conf uh, in May uh, this year to talk about how uh, the Workspace team has been building uh, for multi-platform for a decade, actually, by uh, at the beginning uh, leveraging a transpiler uh, from Java to Objective-C, uh, but they actually completely replaced that with Kotlin multi-platform nowadays. Uh, I do not know if they do use Compose multi-platform, but they do use Kotlin multi-platform uh, very heavily. Um, and, um, and they target, as you can see, server, web, iOS, and Android. And one thing that is very interesting, um, and I quote Jason here, um, they have consistency across platform, feature to feature, bug to bug. That means when something is released, is released everywhere at the same time, and it works the same way, 
So the experience is consistent for the user. But not only for the user, but for you as a developer or a product manager, whoever um, you work on, work on this. Because bugs are also similar on all platforms. Right? You may have sometimes platform specific, but I think that happens more like if you use something like Compose multi-platform. But if you use only the Kotlin part, uh, bugs would be the same on, on all platforms. So when you fix once, you fix, you fix for everywhere. And this is like uh, just, uh, this is like obviously a huge app uh, used by billions of people and with hundreds of developers working uh, on this. Um, so the next thing we need to ask ourselves is, uh, is what is the cost of multi-platform for an Android developer or Android team? So for a minute, we're going to forget about um, how do I need to convince my management because you know it can be very hard to try to, to get management approve Kotlin multi-platform or convincing your iOS peers or even yourself trying to start um, building some Swift code. So the things you will need to do is first, the project structure is going to slightly change. Um, you won't have a main module anymore, but you will have um, multiple modules, but, and for most you will include a new module com called the common main module, which uh, is where all your cutting code is going to live. You can obviously have a m many more modules than that, right? It's not uh, set in stone. Uh, you can have many, many other modules, but for a standard app, small app, I would say you will always have Android and common main because you need these two at least. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, uh, we also have Compose resources, so you can put there your uh, XML files like um, image, uh, drawables, uh, strings, resources as well, and fonts. Uh, no colors, no. just uh, so you know. Um, you will have to learn new libraries, maybe, if you haven't used Skater before or Coin, but uh, I would say the learning curve is pretty soft because uh, at the top you can see Ktor and, um, and at the bottom it's retrofit. The, in, the uh, declaration of accessing an uh, endpoint uh, is fairly similar. The good thing with Ktor is because it's built with uh, Kotlin first, it always support, already supports Flow, uh, so you don't have to convert anything. Um, and regarding and regarding uh, dependency injection, um, the, uh, the, uh, how co uh, Coin and Hilt are w work is very very similar. You declare a module, a module, and then uh, you provide providers uh, where uh, you can have singletons, uh, for instance, with um, um, with Coin. Uh, and it's exactly the same way uh, with uh, with Hilt. So. Again, very similar. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that Hilt uh, ran at compile time, while uh, Coin is, um, is handled at run time, which means Coin performance may be slightly lower than Hilt. Um, right. So the benefit of using KMP for Android. First, um, it has a <coughs> little impact on the Android development time, because uh, once your, set, your project is set up, um, you use the same tools. The learning curve is pretty soft because you already use the, Kotlin, the, the, the language you like, that is Kotlin. Uh, you use the libraries you know already. Most of the, the, the APIs you know already. Um, so that makes the risk pretty low. Uh, you don't need to convince any other teams because this is still your Android project. Um, and usually it leads to a better application architecture because it's going to force yourself, sort of, to um, uh, separate your concerns a little bit better, and so you can move your Kotlin code in the, uh, most of your Kotlin code in your common module, and uh, expose, expect, and actual um, um, uh, interfaces. And then later on, maybe you manage to convince your management, and then uh, you can target iOS desktop and web with a single code base. Um, uh, and how you do that, there are four essential steps. So first you need to 
update your project structure. You will need to update your Gradle dependencies because in particular, if you use Compose multi-platform, uh, you will need to import uh, JetBrains uh, dependencies that are going to replace uh, the, the Jetpack Compose one. You may need to create some expect and actual uh, interfaces so that um, just so it's clean. And then you can literally just move the code to common. It's, it's like if you, if you have like classes that are just pure Kotlin and don't use the Android framework, you can just move them to common code. There is nothing else to do. Um, so in the end, uh, you use the tools you like and you get multi-platform as a bonus. All right. Um, oh, one more thing. So uh, earlier this week, actually, Compose Multi-Platform 1.7 uh, was released. Um, and <coughs> it's based on Jetpack Compose 1.7.1, which includes the shared transition. So you can do nice animation between screens. And uh, Compose Multi-Platform works on uh, as you have seen at the beginning, Android, iOS, desktop, and web. Web is alpha, so maybe not recommend it too, too much. Uh, but um, you can run it everywhere. Um, they also added um, the ad preview annotation so that now you can preview your Compose multi-platform layouts uh, also in, um, in Android Studio. Uh, they added support for Windows size class, um, which uh, enable you to uh, work on not only phone, but tablets and foldables and desktop uh, for uh, Chrome OS, because as you know, uh, all Android apps can run on Chrome OS. Uh, they also just release adaptive layout and navigation, again, for uh, creating nice layout for uh, tablets and foldables. And they did a lot of improvement for uh, in iOS rendering, um, as part, in particular in the views, in the list views. Yeah, that's it for me today. So you can start your KMP journey. Um, you can scan this QR code if you want to get in touch. And now we have time for questions, I believe. Thank you, Cedric. Thank you. We'll start with you. Uh, I just want a quick one. So do you recommend Android Studio for uh, Kotlin multi-platform or the Rider? You were talking about Rider, how it's really good to the ID and also coming from Jet, uh, JetBrains. Uh, so for the editor, you can use uh, Android Studio, but you can also use Fleet, which is a, a JetBrain. Yeah, there is also something called Emper that I haven't tried myself, but is also JetBrain recommend that for. Fleet or Android Studio? What is the Fleet is a pay product, so I would say. Um, uh, it seems to have better performance, especially if you want to do iOS uh, development, because Fleet, basically what it does, it, it, it has a better support for Swift code than Android Studio, so that you can really code in both languages. Um, so it's a little bit more friendly, I would say, for iOS developers. Uh, it's a more integrated uh, uh, solution. But I would say as an Android developer, it's probably better to stick with Android Studio because uh, you will have to work with some Android stuff at some point. Yeah. Thank you so much. No More questions? Thanks for, <clears throat> thanks for the great talk, Cedric. Uh, with the comparison Quinn and Hilt, um, would you say like one, which, um, advantages would coin bring versus hilt is it like uh, is the simplicity something that's worth making you look at coin versus hilt um so coin first um it's multi-platform so uh that's the, the the its strength it's it's really coming from that you can still use it uh for android project without any multi-platform stuff it totally works um in my experience it is uh easier to set up uh, but as um, so, but Hilt works at compile time. So you will usually Hilt is a slightly better in performance. I don't really think that with the device we have today, we we will feel much a difference. So I think it's almost come to personal 
uh, preferences, I would say, for that. Um, but Coin is very well maintained. Uh, there is a strong community as well, uh, and there is a company behind, uh, and they are also endorsed by JetBrain. So I think it's, um, it's, you, you can go with it. And it's open source, so in case a project you know, bankrupt or something, someone else is likely to take over. Thank you. Any more questions? All right. Thank you, Cedric. All right. I've Thank you very much, everyone.